Good afternoon and welcome back to Capitol Hill Ocean Talk. I'm your host, Kate Thompson, coming to you live from the museum at Capitol Hill Ocean Week 2016. Go to a grocery store these days and you're presented with a dazzling array of seafood choices. But how is a piscivore to decide? How do you know what seafood is sustainable and what is better to leave in the ocean? Today, we are going to tackle some of those questions. This afternoon, I am actually joined in the studio today by Laurel Bryant, Chief of External Affairs in the Office of Communications for NOAA Fisheries. Today, we'll talk to Laurel about how NOAA supports sustainable fisheries and how you can do the same by using the Fish Watch website. We're also joined by David Fye, Corporate Chef for Congressional Seafood Company. We'll talk with David about how using underutilized fish species in his recipes. In addition, we have Andy Herrig, the Senior Director of Sustainability, Tax, and Trade at the Food Marketing Institute, who will discuss how his organization ensures that grocery stores receive sustainably sourced seafood. And last, but certainly not least, is Buddy Gwinden, fisherman, fish house owner, operator, and star of the hit National Geographic show, Big Fish Texas. Buddy will be talking with us today about his work to educate the fishing industry about the benefits of sustainable fishing practices. We'll also be talking about his work with Gulf Wild, the first brand of traceable, responsibly harvested, conservation-based seafood in the Gulf of Mexico. Don't forget to join us in the conversation by tweeting us questions at hashtag chow2016 or chat us at oceanslive.org. So we're very excited also to have another special guest in the studio today with us, and this is Buddy the Blue Cat. Look, hey Buddy, thanks so much for joining us today. He gave me a big kiss earlier, everyone. <laughs> so I'm going to get everybody's reaction uh, uh, in, in the studio today with me on Buddy. Laurel, what do you think when you see Buddy? I, you know, I actually, after uh, last night, I think of dinner. I'm not squeamish. <laughs> and uh, I, I'll leave the, the, the jingle to David here. David, what do you think when you see Buddy? They're ugly, but we got to eat them to beat them. <laughs> there you go. Nice. Andy. Well, he's a pretty spectacular looking fish, so right now I'm mostly worried about being upstaged by him. Oh, <laughs> buddy. I can't think he's named after me. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So I, I have to say, like, I was expecting, ew, gross, wow, you know, would, would we really eat that? <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, today we're going to be talking about sustainability with seafood, and I'm going to ask each of you, what does sustainability mean? Laurel. I think that's a really good question, and I think it's, a, it's an important subject of conversation. I think sustainability is not a destination. It's a journey. It's something that you have to constantly maintain. And when it comes to a cryptic, nomadic resource like fish uh, in an ever-changing environment like the ocean, you have to have science-based, constant monitoring, ability to change to those changes and respond, and enforce them, enforce those standards. So, right. yeah. David? I think it in, involves it, something that changes all the time. Uh, is it caught safely? Is it caught in a manner that protects the environment and the biomass of the fish that you're catching? And is it sold and marketed safely as well to uh, keep it sustainable? Right. Andy? Well, I mostly think of sustainability as a, a systemic approach. Uh, when we talk about uh, harvesting a particular species, we're not only talking about uh, making sure the stocks stay at healthy numbers, we're also talking about making sure the ecosystem and the other uh, species around them are also healthy. In the same way, we need to take a systemic approach to a sustainability as both businesses and as consumers. Buddy. For me, sustainability is making sure the fish stocks are healthy. We've done a great job of rebuilding our fish stocks. We also have to make sure the fishing communities and the fishermen are healthy. And one of the most important things are those communities and those fishermen that make their living off these fish. They've sacrificed a lot over time to get stocks sustainable, and, and they need right. to be rewarded for that. Right. And I think, I think Buddy's made a really good point, because I think a lot of us in, in involved in conservation science, we forget that human beings, why are we sustaining it? We're sustaining it to have sustainable human communities. And I think the constant change, um, particularly with seafood, you know, it used to all be about just the stocks. We're now looking more and more at ecosystem-based approaches. And that, that onion that keeps peeling on sustainability is including even more, more issues that have to do with labor right. and, and social issues. So right. it's always changing. Right. Well, I have to say, looking at this uh, as somebody who consumes fish, 
I wouldn't go and buy this. <laughs> it wouldn't be my choice. Although last night at the Leadership Awards dinner, David had an amazing recipe uh, on the menu, including Buddy the Blue Cat. It was, it was amazingly delicious. And if I had known that that came from that, hmm, I wonder, you know? So when you, when you think about that and you go into a grocery store and I'm, you know, oh my gosh, there's so many different choices. What do we do? How do we choose them? Uh, you could go and go fresh, go straight to the person who's, who's going to wrap it for you right there, uh, but then you're paying a ton of money. Or do you go, there's frozen fish too, but then there's 15 different packages of frozen fish, a bunch of different types of fish. How do we make that choice? Uh, and and what, what do I do to be an informed consumer to make sure I'm making the right choice? Laurel. Well, it's a, it's a good question, but I think... Um, Asking those questions. Number one, I would say buy American. If it's, an, if it's a fresh fish, whether it's fresh or frozen, there's a lot of frozen technology out there that, that is not, it, it shouldn't be the dissuasion that it used to be. Um, so not that much difference. It's really a personal preference. But if it's American, I think you need to feel fine that it's been harvested and we need to reward those fishermen for following through and complying with those sustainable practices. We do import an awful lot of seafood in this country, which is unfortunate, but we do. And so I think it's up to the consumer. Take a look at that label. What does it say? What's the country of origin? And really ask if you're, if you're buying there at the fish counter. Sometimes they're busy. Sometimes not all of them are, are informed at the same level. But, but ask them. Engage and ask questions of your fishmonger. Where did it come from? What do you know about this? I, I think that's an important conversation for all of us to start having as right. consumers. Right. Well, and Andy, representing all of these grocery stores, you know, what, what would you say for that? Well, I think I just agree with Laurel that the best thing you can do as a consumer is go in and ask questions. Um, if the associate behind the counter can't help you, there's always a seafood manager who can. Um, we have a broad definition of sustainability that we use throughout the industry, but each grocery chain is going to have a slightly different standard. And those standards are going to be developed with not only their suppliers, but also with different environmental groups and NGOs they work with. So to understand what those differences are and what they mean, I think is incredibly important. Right. If I could interject, I think you also have to play it a little loose and experiment. Mm -hmm. um, I was listening to a show coming over here today, um, and 60% of the seafood <coughs> caught, eaten in this country by consumers consists of shrimp, tuna, and salmon. Yeah. And that's, that's it. it. <laughs> and there's hundreds of other species out there that are good right. and healthy, uh, yeah. and we need to be eating all of them. Right. That's something that um, I think is, is evolving in the com conversation of sustainable right. seafood, and that is getting away from and telling the ocean what to give us, uh, kind of in the words of Barton Seaver, who, who quoted that recently, and really start accepting. Right. And I think Americans have a particular problem with fish. We, you know, it doesn't come out of the ocean in little breaded rectangles. And um, we don't have, you go over to Europe or, or some of the other, they're, they're much closer to seafood. They look at this like and it's that. yum. And they have <laughs> no, they're not intimidated by it. Right. In this country we are, and I think that's where um, leaders like, like David and really even the retail community, we need to get more of that education out there, mm -hmm. get more familiarity built. We clearly need more seafood in our diet. Mm -hmm. We are an obese society that do not have enough omega-3s. And, and so there's, there's a lot of reason right. to skip behind right. that. So we had talked to kind of, you t mentioned earlier about stocks and all these other things. So what is NOAA Fisheries doing to work to help the industry know what's sustainable? Well, and Buddy, chime in. I, I'm going to get a test here. Yeah. He'll, he'll <laughs> give me the hook if I say this wrong. <laughs> so U.S. Fisheries, by and large, kind of a thumbnail. There's over 465 stocks or stock complexes. They're managed under 56 fishery management plans. Every fishery is under an annual catch limit. And that annual catch limit is held to um, accountability measures. If overfishing is occurring, um, then those have to be adjusted. Uh, about every five years, about, the stocks are assessed. Um, if things have changed and what was once an annual catch limit that was sustainable and now that's changed, it needs to immediately respond, be adjusted, and that goes in. So Buddy being involved in the eight, Buddy's involved in councils around the country, mm -hmm. Buddy's involved in the Gulf of Mexico, those kinds of decisions, those changes in annual catch limits, total allowable catch, all of that is done with the participation of right. the full spectrum of stakeholders, and that's where those rules right. come down. Right. So, well, if it's constantly changing, how is how do you, as a, a fish or fish fisherman, fish house owner, how do you keep track of that? Well, we, we respond to the market. I mean, if our fishery's in good shape, we're getting a lot of fish out of that fishery. 
uh, it's what the consumers should should access and sustainability comes from the consumer to the fishermen in their purchasing power so it's very important for the consumer to get behind US caught fish that are sustainable and and right you know, provide us with the ability to supply these fish by buying them. Right. So Andy, how do you then take it one step further for the grocery stores? You've got to ensure that you know, you've got Safeway, uh, Wegmans, Costco, everybody that you could think of that you can go into <laughs> pretty much you represent. How do you ensure that they are buying sustainably? Well, we all, all of our members have systems in place that allow them to go up the supply chain and look at that. So they use third party audits. They use record keeping to make sure that what they get into the store um, is actually what people say it is. Um, we also have long and close relationships with our suppliers. Um, and so building those relationships and working with people you trust, I think, is the most important first step to getting that process right. Because when you can communicate back and forth about what consumers are looking for and what, in turn, we're going to look for from our suppliers, and the suppliers feel that they need to be responsive to that, that's the first step towards creating a successful right. program. Right. So, David, as, as a chef, mm -hmm. <laughs> this can get tricky because you got to take this and put it on a plate and make it look yummy for that person. Otherwise, they're not going to walk into your restaurant or, you know, walk into your, you know, convention and trade and want to, you know, have that fish there. So how do you keep that balance of using sustainable fish that or underutilized fish that people might think, oh, my gosh, I don't want to eat that? How, how do you do that? Well, that's the fun of my job. Uh, and by the way, I'm corporate chef for a wholesale seafood yeah. company. I don't have a restaurant anymore. But I got to, again, first go in and play with it. Um, and visual is the first 90% of your appetite or, or the appeal to a customer. So you got to make it look good. After that, it's the taste. And that's my job to play around with it and learn the, the flavor profile and characteristics, what spices, what vegetables would go with it, go well with it. And, and I just have to play. I've been demoing this fish up and down the mid-Atlantic for the last two years, and I run, especially the wild blue catfish, because that's my concern right now for the bay. Um, people have in mind that it's a scavenger, a bottom feeder, and it's a muddy, mushy fish. This is not. This is an apex predator. It eats rockfish, bluefish, and crabs, and it eats, it tastes good because it eats all those things. Yeah. Right, right. So I'm going to go to Buddy because I know that you work really closely with a program called Transparency. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, the Gulf Wild Program is what it's called. And um, five years ago, we started a traceability program that follows your fish from the fisherman that caught it and where he caught it in the Gulf of Mexico to the plate you're eating it on. And that program was put in place to actually in, make consumers assured of where their seafood is coming from. We've had a lot of fish fraud in this country. We've, the government's done a lot to s try to squelch that, but a better thing to do is put a tag in your fish that tells the people exactly who caught it, where it came from, and how it got to their plate. And then you can also read on the website about the sustainability of that fish and what you can do to help with sustainability. Right. So, uh, Andy, as a representative of so many grocery stores, bottom line, all of this stuff ends up there or on the plates that we eat when we go into a restaurant. Uh, how can organizations like NOAA uh, do a better job of marketing and explaining sustainability and underutilization of fish uh, to the consumer? Well, you know, I talked before about looking at sustainability as a systemic approach, and really um, that's the approach we need to take. The role that restaurant chefs play in driving demand for a species at the grocery store level is incredibly important, as is the kind of practices that the seafood, uh, the fishermen themselves put into place. Right. And so I think NOAA really is, serves an incredibly important sort of central clearinghouse role of coordinating all those efforts and helping to educate consumers about what each, each sort of leg of that stool is doing uh, to paint a for, sort of a fuller picture so consumers can go in and feel confident that what they're buying is not only wholesome, but it's sustainable. Right. Well, 
I, I think this has been an amazing conversation, and I wish we could go on for another half hour because I'm really having fun with it. But uh, we got to get back into chow. So I thank you so much for for joining thank us today. Thank thanks thanks for so much you. for bringing Buddy <laughs> and, and and being with us you and buy more blue cat. cat. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm I, I'm not very good at flying, so my <laughs> husband would have to do it. <laughs> so, but thanks so much for joining us today, and uh, you know, thanks so much for all of you for joining us and learning about how seafood choices can help sustain a healthy ocean. At 3 p.m., Chow will continue discussing this topic with a panel on Eyes on the Water, Science and Traceability of U.S. Sustainable Seafood. But before we go, I want to extend a special thank you to our presenting sponsors, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the U.S. Department of the Interior, and the Walton Family Foundation. In addition, we would like to thank the co-hosts of Chow, the Campbell Foundation, and the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation, as well as all of our other sponsors, because without their support, the success and accessibility of Chow would not be possible. That's all for Capital Hill Ocean Talk today. Don't forget to tune in to OceansLive.org tomorrow for the final day of Capitol Hill Ocean Week.